Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the September 10th, 2012 meeting of the Yukon Planning Commission. Uh, tonight, if you will join us by standing, we'll have the invocation by Commissioner Doggett and the flag salute by Commissioner Davis. <coughs> Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Give us grace as we make decisions that affect our community. Remind us that what we do here today is in your glory and for the service of the citizens of Utah. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve. We ask these things in your name. Roll call, please. Here. 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 Commissioner Beaver is absent tonight. He has another engagement. Uh, item one is approval of the minutes of the August 13 meeting. Have any corrections or additions or something you might have in mind? Mr. Chairman, move to uh, uh, approve the minutes of the last meeting. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion among the commissioners? Call the roll, please. Yay. Yes. 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 Next is uh, visitors. If there's anyone here that would like to address the council, the commissioners, about a non agended item, we'd like for you to step forward and do it at this time. Glad to see City Councilman Opitz here with us tonight. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Item three is consider a lot split for John A. Henry and company for Block B, Track B of the Yukon Hills edition. Anyone here to speak to that tonight, please? You state your name. Yes, uh, Jeff Norman for the applicant, uh, John A. Henry and company. Uh, we. Uh, proposed a uh, lot split a uh, lot B uh, tracked B uh, along Cornwall this was is the site as you know situated uh, roughly between the, the new building we built several years ago with the donut shop and red dirt guitars <coughs> uh, all the way to Bass Avenue and in connection with uh, in, in connection with this lot split we're going to sell this lot to the financial institution who is then committed to come in and uh, improve Bass Avenue as a city street. It's been, uh, it was dedicated years and years ago, but has never been accepted by the city or finished. So that will be uh, part and parcel of their building permit application. Do they intend to put it all the way across to the housing addition? Uh, not at this time. Just back yeah. to where? No, it will go back to the depth of the, the lot. And then, um, the companion item that you see is a curb cut uh, because of the proximity of bass and the way that their uh, site lays out uh, we are going to put a 35 foot driveway on the southern boundary of their property which will provide access to their site and to our shopping center with internal cross access which will flow between our shopping center and their bank site and then on out to bass so the traffic will be able to go without getting out on the, on the street uh, that's that's essentially the proposal did you uh, read the staff report that you uh, if we were to approve this it would have to be with the conditions that you would have to come back and rezone it from C4 to C3 yes sir and we've already taken the uh, initial steps to provide the city with the appropriate uh, notice lists and everything we're prepared to do that and hopefully we'll be here in October at the uh, uh, City Council meeting for that and it will be I believe it will be I would consider it down zoning from where we are to the new zoning we'll go from C4 to C3 uh, I believe yes it'd be a down zoning um. Happy to see that Bass Avenue finally <laughs> get uh, 
something done with it. So, so it will be able, they'll be able to run from that little strip shopping center into yours and everything right to them. Yeah, the traffic can internally circulate all the way from Bass through the bank site into our shopping center. And um, uh, I guess, you know, ultimately that traffic can go from Bass on to Turtle Creek. So, yeah. you know, there'll be internal circulation. Yeah. Uh, right now, that's the, uh, you know, extension of Bass, as you asked. We wouldn't, we wouldn't go beyond the depth of the site for, for this sort of development. I notice you're not going to take that whole lot you're not going to sell the whole piece. <coughs> you'll have a piece there and back. There'll be a remnant, which uh, the, w the way this is going to work out, it, it, as you guys know, there's a s pretty significant topography issue there. There's a large hill, and we're probably going to use a lot of that land as a transition between uh, the bank site and what we hope to at some point ultimately develop as a connection of our shopping center further to the north uh, at some point next to Cross Trainers Fitness and on north. But um, you know, so far we haven't had uh, a cause to do that, but we could potentially develop uh, another large um, junior anchor type tenant back behind uh, this development. And then the the the, uh, the road will be a permanent easement between us and the bank, the the curb cut, and that driveway will be a 35 foot permanent easement, which we're going to record of record, uh, and will be maintained uh, by both parties. Any of the commissioners have questions for the chairman? Not me. Mr. Davis, do you have anything? Herman, do you have anything? Uh, then I'm ready for a motion if you're, if you're here to give it. Mr. Chairman, in the case of the application for a lot split for Block B, Track B, of Yukon Hills edition, second section submitted by John A. Hen Henry. We've read the staff report and received testimony at the public hearing. We find ourselves in agreement with staff findings, including all legal descriptions cited in the staff report. I move this item be approved with the following condition. And the condition is the applicant must submit an application for rezoning the bank property from C4 uh, to C3 in order to bring the created a lot into zoning compliance. Said zoning application must be submitted and approved prior to issuance of the building permit for the property. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? Anybody in the audience like to say anything? Call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Item uh, four is, as he said, the companion item of a curb cut for John A. Henry for the uh, curb cut onto Cornwell Drive for the new road to access the bank property. Uh, any discussions or anybody have any questions about that? Mr. Chairman, uh, in the case of a request by John A. Henry to review a proposed driveway location for the Yukon Hill Shopping Center commercial development, we've read the staff report, received testimony at the public hearing, find ourselves in agreement with staff findings, including all plans and attachments, move this item be approved with the following findings. Finding number one, the distance between the proposed drive and the main shopping center drive located to the south is approved with a variance to section 2.06.A of the City of Yukon Subdivision Regulations. And finding number two, the distance between the proposed drive and the intersection of Bass Avenue and Cornwell Avenue is sufficient for the reasons stated in the SAF report and as permitted by section 2.06.G of the City of Yukon Subdivision Regulations. We have a second for that. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? 
Anybody have any questions? Call the roll, please. Yay. Yes. 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 Okay, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, item five is consider a conditional use permit for five star for, uh, storage. Mr. Opitz. I'm uh, Rick Opitz with Five Star Storage, 1777 West Vandermont, Yukon, Oklahoma. And uh, I'm really here just to answer any questions that you might have. I want to give you a little bit of history first. Um, we have a conditional use permit there now at the moment, and we're just trying to expand that to store porta potties. And um, a company named Royal Flush uh, stores with us. They also rent some office space from us. And they employ about five to six people. And uh, on the west side of the lot, they store their trucks and their clean and empty pots. And the <coughs> website actually gives them a little bit of advertisement because it's next to I-40. Uh, but only the new pots are actually being stored there. And on the north area, uh, that's already been graveled, um, so there won't be any abnormal dust. Uh, these pots are lightweight and they can be handled and so they can be handled and loaded easily. <coughs> There's also a buffer zone of trees that I left when I was building five star storage to the north on the very north boundary um, so that I wouldn't disturb the homeowners while I was building five star storage. And we left those trees there. I don't know if you have a do you have a photograph of that in front of you? <coughs> Can I approach? Yeah. So how much of that land is going to be used for storage? None of this land here is going to be used for storage. I know, but I'm just saying. Okay. And this is a two-piece garage, and none of this is going to be Do you have a fence back there, Rick, on the back part of your property on the north? I do not have a fence on the north side. I, uh, my intention was to go ahead and take those trees out and eventually build a fence there on the north side, but I never did. I just left the tree. So will there be anything around these porta potties stored back there, or would there would not be a fence around them? On the north side, we will build a fence around the porta potties. There will be a cyclone fence around them on the north side. But you don't intend to put up a site screening fence? You're going to just do a cyclone fence? In the cyclone fence, if you've noticed any of them, you can take, I don't know exactly what they call it, but it's site blinding material right. that you can put down through right. the cyclone fence and it stays really, really well. Mm -hmm. I've seen several that what you intend to do? Places, yeah. My intention is to do that, especially on the north side. Yeah. 
I don't think there's any need to do it on any of the other sides, but especially on the north side. But with the tree buffer, anywhere from 50 foot of trees to 100 foot of trees, and then the site blinding material on the north side, <coughs> I don't think it would bother anybody. Well, those are pretty high dollar homes there just to the north of that. Mm -hmm. to have an adverse effect to their property no not at all we you know and if I don't think there will be I drove the road myself and I've looked from the road where the houses are and I can't see them from the road now they may be able to see corner or something of them from their backyard because I didn't go in any of their yards and look around well in the fall when the trees lose their foliage and stuff I I think it would be important to have that kind of thing. I really think the only foliage that you're going to lose is very, very little because they're them ugly cedars that we all dislike, <laughs> and they're green all year round. Correct. <laughs> well, what about the front of the property uh, where they're going to store the new ones? People driving down I-40, you don't think that would hurt your business? or? You know, I don't think so. Uh, if somebody didn't like it for some reason, I mean, and sh could tell me a reason that it would hurt my business or anything, I'd, I'd sure take a look at it. But I think you guys probably know me and my business well enough to know that if the porta potty smelled any at all, I couldn't have them. Uh, if they didn't stack up good in the corner, I couldn't have them there. Uh, you won't find very many of them out there now because they're all out getting ready for the Fair. State Fair of Oklahoma and those type things. Is <coughs> so that where you park your trailer? Is that yeah, lot? we sure do. We park some trailers in that lot. A, a few vehicles park in that lot. And uh, we've used it mainly for parking, but we've sold vehicles out of it and sold trailers out of it before and just used it for those kind of things. The fence will be a six foot fence. How tall are those things? Are they? Yeah. Uh, they're they're over good? six foot. So You'll be able to see the eight foot fence. That's two extra foot. That would be enough to cover. I would say an eight foot fence would cover it. Should cover it. I haven't measured them to see. I know that would cover eight foot. Certainly covers part of that, and that way there wouldn't be any homeowners. <coughs> well, I also want you guys to know that these porta potties are stored there at the moment. I have a guy renting an office from me. Uh, I'll just let you know he's looking for his own place and everything. So all everything that he has is movable. It probably won't stay there for any long period of time. Uh, I wished it would because he's having to pay me rent for that. But I expect him to buy his own place and everything because he's even showed me a place he's looking at now. I think it's appropriate to that type of property, and I think part uh, part of it is uh, state highway. Part of yeah, and part of the use of fuel is to advertise the value for traffic on that interstate. That's right? that's why he wanted to. And they're out there now, aren't they? Yeah, they're out there now. I saw there. People see them, and uh, I think it's a, it's probably appropriate for that type of property. Another thing uh, on a conditional use permit, and I know you guys know this, if uh, you were to approve it and it didn't go okay, I think it comes up within another year. I mean, you have to approve it again in another year, probably. So, so 
Well, Rick, I certainly have faith in you that you, in your position that you've attained here in the city in a short amount of time, you wouldn't want to do anything to hurt anybody in the city, any homeowner. Absolutely city. not. My whole idea of being a part of UConn is for UConn to prosper and grow and be blessed, and uh, I don't want to do anything myself that would hurt that. And if I thought this would hurt it, I sure wouldn't be here tonight. But at the same time, I'm open if something is not kosher, I would sure be open to anything, any comments you had or anything of that nature, because I want it to work well for me, but also for the city of Yukon. It's not something that's going to be there for a long period of time, though. I know that for sure. Well, the only thing I would say is I would prefer an eight foot ten back there, uh, personally. And if if he's going to move it, let you know, sell it to him, and we'll pay, let him pay for it. That extra two feet then won't be that much. I wouldn't think so. there any other questions from the commissioners are we ready okay I'll accept the motion on this then. mr. chairman in the case of the application for a conditional use permit submitted by five-star storage We've read the staff report and received testimony at the public hearing find ourselves in agreement with the staff findings including all attachments cited in the staff reports. I move this item be recommended for approval to the city council with the following conditions. Condition number one, site proof screening be installed around the proposed overflow area north of the existing facility. Adjacent to the residentially zoned area. Said screening shall be a minimum of eight feet in height and be installed in accordance with all appropriate City of Yukon requirements. Condition number two, appropriate access be designed and installed to the north overflow area. Said access as well as the area itself shall be covered such that the dust will be controlled when product is being taken from or stored within the area. Appropriate treatment shall be discussed with and approved by the community development director or other appropriate entity as determined by the community development director. Second. Okay, so we are leaving out the area to the west side of the facility for store for screening and uh, call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Thank you, Rick. Thank you, gentlemen. Rick. Item uh, six is consider a lot split for Harry Taylor being out block E, Yukon lot A-9 and A-20 block E, located at 430 Poplar Avenue. And just for everybody's sake, I am not related to this gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said last time. <laughs> last time. That's <laughs> what I said last time. You're still not going to claim me. This is beginning to look real familiar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir, go ahead. Uh, as you all know, I came before you when we rezoned that property from uh, agriculture to residential. And as uh, far as I know, I've met all the requirements for the split. The uh, designated square footage is there. Uh, there's a 60-foot frontage, which is required by the city. And uh, I just uh, want to downsize and eliminate some of my lawn mowing. <laughs> and we're going to construct a single development house back there for a single single family, family. family and that is the purpose of it and I've already already constructed a new fence back there I'm sure you all drive down Holly and you've probably seen it so 
that's that's my proposal. As I remember last time, there was some something with the neighbor. No, oh, that's you know that's it's not anything uh, that's going to be any problem. We discussed that in the council meeting, and uh, it's uh, her sewer line. I gave her permission to run her sewer line straight across her backyard under my fence to connect to the city sewer line, which runs through my backyard. Right. And uh, it's deep enough. It's not going to hinder anybody building a house back there because they won't go four and a half foot deep for the foundation. Right. They just have to be sure not build a cellar or a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> but the house will be on top of her uh, sewer line. Well, right. not particularly. It depends on how far back they go. What they build. There's a possibility it could. But in the event it does, there's plenty of room to go around the back of the house that was built mm -hmm. there to tie, like the sewer line. to tie into the sewer. Right. right, that sewer line's there at, at your, your pleasure and you're doing her a favor with that. And if that has to be moved a little bit, then that's no, not a big problem. No. Right. Any other questions from the commissioners? We have a motion, please. Mr. Chairman, in the case of the application for a lot split for 430 Poplar Avenue submitted by Larry Taylor, we have read the staff report and received testimony at the public hearing. We find ourselves in agreement with the staff findings, including all legal descriptions and sites of the staff report. I move that this item be approved. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I would like to uh, thank Mitchell and Scarlett and the Planning Commission and the City Council for how pleasant you've been to deal with, and it could be any better. Thank I just want to let you know. Thank you. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Item seven is new business. New business, no problem. Open discussion. Anybody have any, anything they want to talk about? Um, tomorrow night, the 11th, at Yukon Park is National Night Out. There will be hot dogs, games, lots of activities. Police will be there their equipment, TV will stay from other people, so should be an enjoyable time. Come out and meet your neighbors. What time? Starts at 7. Okay. Did I get that right? Sunday, uh, the Air Force Band will be in the city park. Uh, and it's a smaller group. It's, it's not a huge group. It's a, actually, it's a of a rock and roll group of the Air Force Band. They call them Top Brass. And uh, anything that the, that's in the military bands is always outstanding. And I believe it's at 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Come bring your lawn chairs and sit out and enjoy a free, free, free afternoon of music. Did they? And we had the Navy band several years ago and completely packed the auditorium, <laughs> completely packed. And that was one of the finest musical organizations I have ever heard in my entire life. These people are, they audition to be in these bands. And uh, they're quite, quite something to see. Also, uh, like for us tomorrow, 9-11, Keep those folks and what happened in 01 in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, it's still a pretty raw situation to a lot of families here in New York City and around the country. Uh, any other discussion? 
discussion. Y'all staff have anything? Any council? Any other? Clear this meeting closed. Next meeting is October the 8th.